Welcome to the pecan tutorial about how to find the function of your gene. To find the function of the gene, uh, pecan has downloaded the top 100 hits to various databases, including PhagesDB, HHPred, NCBI Blast, Conserve Domain Database, and two different transmembrane prediction programs. These links to these databases are found at the top of the gene window. Uh, let's jump in and look at the phages DB first of all, uh, just to show you how the, the, the basic windows are set up for each of the databases. There are headers at the top here. When you click on these headers, for example, <clears throat> It will sort the top 100 hits based on the values within that column. For example, here you see um, the E value, the high and the low uh, being sorted. Or you can even sort by cluster. So E values are what's used to be able to um, score the significance of the different database hits. If you have E values that are zero, for example, those are your top hits. Um, e values that um, are can be as large as 0 0.05 and still be significant. Anything bigger than that is becomes um, less likely to be a valid support hit. Okay, so there's lots of <clears throat> ways that you can look at this first database. Scroll up above this as we have sorted this uh, by function name, fam, and subcluster. Whenever one of these changes, you start a new line. As you can see here for the N cluster, there's uh, two different function names found. Uh, terminase and terminase large subunit. So both of these are terminases. It totals then um, about 34 <laughs> hits that are supporting a terminase type of function for this. Okay, so that's a good place to start. And this is a good place to get a feel for the amount of support for the different types of functions. Below this is the HHPred where um, phages uh, DB blast and the NCBI blast um, are comparing nucleotides um, to the database. The HHPred predicts the secondary tertiary types of structures of the amino acids and compares that to structural types of databases. So one of these is the PFAM. And you can tell PFAM, it usually starts with PF. And the PFAM typically gives a very short description <laughs> of the, the function here, the kind of like little one-liners. And so Oftentimes, it's a little hard to see if you really fits. Okay, sometimes you would like a little more information than that. If you find hits that have uh, four ba four characters and underline, and then another character, these are hits to the uh, PDB database. This is a structural database that has three-dimensional structures of proteins. So this would be a really good thing to hit. And let's look at, for example, this one that I've already checkmarked. And it's good to come over and look at the target from target to. And you see that this matches a query from query to. So this is the query is the, the protein that it, you're trying to find the function of. The targets are what it hits. 
And notice this goes from 113 to 552. That's going to be important when we look at this. Uh, we'll be able to see that range and how um, that is significant. You see that this matches, uh, displays the three-dimensional structure here. And if you scroll down, these are always useful is to look at the uh, abstracts, if there's any available, they always have good information in here. So <clears throat> if we scroll down a little bit further, you will find a link called the Uniprot. This information used to be in here, but they've changed it and shifted it over to Uniprot. Uh, you click on that and then come to the feature viewer and this gets right to the heart of the matter. You can then see the different domains that are in this, for example, single-stranded binding domain, um, ATPase activity, um, nuclease activity. And the real fun part is if you scroll down, you can see where these domains actually um, fit or sit in the three-dimensional structure. And you can rotate the three-dimensional structure around and look at those. So this is a real fun site uh, to be able to see where different elements actually fall. Now, remember, we looked up that um, it matched well from 113 to the end. So it really doesn't have this single-stranded DNA binding protein domain. It didn't match to um, our, our query. Okay, so the other thing to look at is the E value here. You see a, most all these are significant and they all are DNA packaging, which is really a terminase function. So all of these are terminases, large terminates. So there's a lot of evidence for terminase here. I'm looking and comparing to the 3D structure. So this is really strong evidence. If you find good matches in HHPRED, this is great type of um, evidence. Come down, you can look at the uh, NCBI database. We've looked at this a little bit as far as the target from, target to. We see it matches the end very well. Um, we've found a 100% identity match here, and you see here is uh, the link to the match, but there are several other matches that are listed in here, and these are also 100%. So um, NCBI, when it finds a match to a um, 100% match, or any any match, it will then, and they all f are, have the same identity, it will usually just give you one. But we've learned how to tease out and look at uh, some of the other ones that are also following that 100% match. The reason we did that is because NCPI usually only shows you the oldest match instead of newer ones. And some of the newer ones um, are actually of more interest. If you want to see all of them, you can always go to this uh, in, and hit the link and then go up to identical proteins and you can see all of them that fall within it. You see there's actually 10 of them here and uh, we displayed the top eight. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll find a lot of these. And you can find more structure or more functional information under the name. So this is useful um, type of link to be able to have in NCBI. As we look down through here, we see there's a lot of one-to-one. -one. <coughs> and so uh, this is a lot of good supporting evidence. You see there's terminases listed even down into the 90s. <coughs> The conserved domain, there were no hits in here. <coughs> but if there is, usually the percent identity is very low because these are really short domain hits. They're not trying to 
match the whole genome or the, the whole protein. They're matching um, very small identities. And so identity may be low because it's not very long. But that's okay. Go over and look at the E value. That'll give you an, a better idea on how significant it is. Also, in the conserved domain database, you can oftentimes mark more than one because there may be, as we just looked at, a single-stranded binding protein, uh, ATPase, uh, nuclease function. If you found hits to those domains, um, you may find all of them. So you may want to mark more than one. How you can determine that is look, follow as you scroll down through, look at the query from two range and see if you get different ranges. If you get different ranges then to functions, then you can mark the different functions. Finally, the membrane predictions here will tell you if there's any transmembrane domains. There doesn't happen to be any for this particular one. Um, if we were to look at another one, for example, a tape measure usually always has some. You see that uh, the tape measure, it has, actually it doesn't have any predicted. Yeah. It usually always has some. At least here it has one predicted, a little teeny one. No? Um, TMHMM didn't predict any, um, but top cons did. So you would see little boxes here, or you will see something that says uh, transmembrane <laughs> domain, and you'll see an inside outside in this, for example. Okay, so once you had finished um, looking at the evidence and browsing through it, you can then go back and mark the evidence boxes if this was transmembrane, I would mark this box. Transmembrane here, I'd mark it. Uh, conserved domain, I'd mark one or more boxes if appropriate, if they were different um, functional domains. I'll come up and mark the one in the NCBI. We've marked 100 already. And come up and mark HH Pred, I've already marked um, one that I really liked. And same with uh, the Phages DB, pick one of your, your favorites. And finally, you come up and you see that there's a function. So in the function here, you can then start typing this in. We start, start typing in terminase, and we find uh, matches to whatever we've termed uh, term we've started typing in here. Now, you want to go and pick one of these because this is a dictionary of functions. So there's a lot of ways of putting in terminases. You can put terminase domain, you can put terminase da 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 da, da. But then what we want to do is only put in those that are found in the accepted uh, function dictionary. So you'd pick one of these, either terminase or the large subunit, if you thought it was a large subunit. I'm just going to put in terminase. You come up and you'd push save. Now, um, let me go down. Notice that this was a, an X here, a red X, and now it's changed to a check mark. That means that we have put in a function that matches the, the dictionary. If we go back and we erase this, Okay, and we do say, notice um, you have the red check mark because we haven't put in a function yet. Okay, so let me put in terminase. And save this. And now we have attached a, a function to this gene. Notice that Uh, there are some genes that have NKF. If we do not find a function, you need to type in to the function here. Start typing in um, NK, and you'll see the NKF. This stands for no known function. That's what you want to use if there is no function that you can assign. Put in NKF for no known function. 
Okay, that summarizes how to put in functions. Thank you very much, and we'll see you later.